morning. I want to welcome you all to worship on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost and Fourth of July weekend. A uh, special welcome to all of our visitors with us today, as well as all of our church members. Glad to have you joining us for worship today. Today, I'm Pastor Karen Toos, pastor of Prince of Peace Lutheran Church here in Freeport. And I have just a couple of announcements before we begin our service. The office will be closed tomorrow, Monday morning, because of the 4th of July weekend. And so if you need some um, service, you can call me on my cell phone or, or Tuesday morning we'll be in the office. And next Sunday, we're having a food drive for the FACC. Uh, everybody's invited to come on out. Please put non-perishable food items in the trunk of your car and come to the back of the parking lot where we'll have volunteers there to take the food out of your trunk. We'll be asking people not to get out of their cars because we want to want to keep this as safe as possible. Um, but then we have a little extra perk this time. Um, we have some Culver's coupon, uh, tokens rather, Culver's tokens that are good for a single scoop of, uh, in a bowl or in a cone um, as a special um, thank you, a thank you for coming out and making a food donation to the FACC and thanks to Thrive of Action teams for those Culver's tokens. Other than that, I would draw your attention to those announcements that are printed in the bulletin, and we begin our worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sins. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Let the Whole Creation Cry.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join in singing, Come, let us join our cheerful songs. good. 
But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, within my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at, at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's opening question applies just as well to the adults as it does to the kids. So whether you're a kid or whether you're an adult, I got a question for you today. Do you ever do something that you just had already decided you were not going to do? I can think of plenty of times that I have known that something was wrong and I was not going to do it. And I have done it anyways. Whether it's getting patient, or whether it's, um, you know, I can decide I am not going to lie to telemarketers anymore, and yet that, no, I'm sorry, Karen isn't here right now, <laughs> comes out of my mouth. Um, you know, so that may seem trivial, because I'm not going to uh, confess to you online, for the whole world to see, my greater sins. But the point I want to make is that there are times in our lives when we know something is wrong and we are not going to do it, and yet it happens anyways. 
And that's what St. Paul was talking about in today's second lesson. He's talking about when he knows, okay, I know. I'm going into this situation. I'm not going to do this. And he does it anyways. And he says, but thanks be to God for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because God loves me and I know I am forgiven. Hold on to that promise. That even when you do something you know you're not supposed to do, or you don't do something you should do, God loves you. And God forgives you. And God never leaves you. So, if you're supposed to make your bed and you don't, God still loves you. If you're supposed to clean your bedroom and you don't, God loves you. Just remember, no matter what it is that you know you should do or you know you shouldn't do, and you do the exact opposite, God's love is there for you always. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for that promise that you love us always, even when we do things that we know we shouldn't or don't do things we should. Continue to work within us, in our hearts and in our minds, to help us to make the right choices. And as much as that, Lord, continue to reassure us that even when we fail, your love claims us always. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, this weekend, as we celebrate the 4th of July, we celebrate our nation's 244th birthday. It is 244 years since the Declaration of Independence was signed which led to the Revolutionary War, which resulted in independence from England. Not everyone in the 13 colonies agreed on independence from England, however. The Loyalists, who were loyal to England and loyal to the king, thought that those who supported independence were treasonous. And the Patriots, who wanted independence, staunchly opposed those who were loyal to England. The colonies were divided over this issue, as were communities and even families. Today is the 155th anniversary of the final day of the Battle of Gettysburg. The Battle of Gettysburg was said to be the turning point in the Civil War. And the Civil War was about slavery, and just as much, if not even more, it was about the future of the Union. The states were set against each other, north against south, with the southern states having seceded from the United States. Families were divided as well, with different views on the future of the Union and differing views on slavery. And the division even went so far as in families where family members fought on opposing armies. The North fought for unity. The South fought for independence so that they could establish their own government. They had chosen sides and they were set one against the other. Now today's gospel lesson is also a story of division. something we know all too well. It might sometimes seem that division is unique to our time, but actually it's a timeless story, played out with different details, different dimensions, but the division is the same. I'm reminded of the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. God created the world in order to be in relationship with it. 
And God said to Adam and Eve, here it is, this wonderful garden. It's everything I can give you, and it's everything you need. And God spent time with Adam and Eve in the garden. They enjoyed one another's company and had a great relationship. But then, one day, along came the serpent. And in speaking with Eve, the serpent got her thinking about God's intentions. If she turned from God's ways and ate the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then, said the serpent, she would become like God. And so she chose that other path, the path that led away from relationship with God. And she rejected God's dance of life and relationship and love in the Garden of Eden. Such a story of division is what we hear in today's Gospel lesson. Beneath and beyond Jesus' story about the two groups of children. Jesus used the story of the two groups of children to point to a truth that he saw. The religious leaders were opposed to following the leadership of John the baptizer and his leadership. And they were also opposed to following Jesus and his leadership. With the children, we see their stubbornness. We see their resistance to joining with the other group. One group wants to play weddings, and the other one wants to play funerals. The one that wants to play weddings wants the other group to join in. When they play wedding music on their flutes, they want the other group to join in dancing to the joyous music. But they won't dance. And the group that wants to play funerals chants a funeral dirge and wants the other children to join in the cries and the wails of mourning. But they won't join in. But this isn't a matter like on the childhood playground where we want to play kickball but they want to play dodgeball and so we can't agree so nobody plays. Not at all. This is about, or this weddings and funerals, is about life and death. Jesus and John the baptizer both invite God's people into a deeper relationship with God and into a celebration of God's life and love and grace. Each of them extends the invitation to God's people in a different way. But the people are having none of it. With John, the people reject his austere ways because he fasts and he abstains from alcoholic beverages and he wears strange clothes made out of camel's hair and he eats a strange diet, locusts and wild honey. So the people reject him and they judge him and they even suspect or suppose that he is possessed by a demon. So they won't follow John's invitation. They won't accept his invitation because of his life of self-denial, which is not appealing to them. But then, Jesus enters the picture. He has a different approach to God's love and life and grace. He meets the people where they are. He enjoys a good meal with friends. He likes fine wine. Jesus loves a party. He doesn't re reject the extravagance that is lavished upon him when Mary pours expensive perfume on, her, on his feet. The people still criticize Jesus, and they won't accept him. They call him a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Well, still, scorned and rejected, Jesus keeps on extending the invitation. We hear his invitation, come to me, all you who are weary, all you who are burdened down by life, come to me, because in me you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. 
And so, in the midst of all of the things that pull us in different directions, dividing us one from another, we find our true direction in Jesus Christ, in his word, in his invitation. When we join his invitation to the ways of justice and peace, hospitality and welcome for everybody, we find life and hope and blessing. In the midst of a world where people take opposing views on all kinds of issues, even issues that are life and death matters, Jesus invites us into his ways, which are the ways of life, as we learn and grow in our walk with Jesus Christ. We also grow in our understanding of the importance of knowing God and joining in God's work in this world. Come to me, invites Jesus. Amen. Born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. We pray for the church. Sustain us as we share your word. Embrace us as we struggle to find our common ground. Lift up leaders with powerful and prophetic voices. Free us from stagnant faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the well-being of creation. Protect the air, water, and land from abuse and pollution. Free us from apathy in our care of creation and direct us toward sustainable living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the nations, and especially the United States, as we celebrate our nation's independence this weekend. Guide leaders in developing just policies and guide difficult conversations. Free us from patriotism that hinders relationship building. Lead us to expansive love for our neighbor. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As we celebrate the 244th birthday of our nation, we ask you to guide our celebrations so that in the midst of the pandemic, we may continue to practice safe precautions for the sake of our own health and the health of others. Give us patience, Lord, and wisdom in these times, so that our actions are witnesses to your love and grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all in need, for all who are tired, feeling despair, sick or oppressed. We pray for all who are sick or recovering from the COVID-19 virus, and all those who work puts them at risk for the virus. Take their yoke upon you and ease their burdens. Give your consolation and free us from all that keeps us bound. And we pray this day for healing for Joy, Mary Ellen, Libby, Stuart, Karen, Jay, Izzy, Rick, and Sarah, and those that we name now. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And gracious God, we give you thanks for all of the blessings that you continue to bestow upon us. Your mercy and care are abundant, and we thank you especially for these blessings. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. And God, we pray for this congregation and all congregations. Bless pastors, congregational leaders, and all of church members and friends. Energize our worship ministry volunteers, church administrators, and those who maintain our building. Shine in this place that we might notice the ways that your love transforms our lives. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for those who have died in the faith. Welcome them into your eternal rest, and comfort us in our grief until we are joined with them in new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the peace of God with those with which you are gathered. And at this time, we acknowledge the offering, and I 
continue to express my thanks to those of you who are continuing to make your offerings to God and to the work of this church during this time. Uh, they are very appreciated and they're helping to keep the variety of ministries that continue to continue. Uh, we're having Bible studies by Zoom and uh, a book discussion group. We had book club last Sunday. Um, just quite a variety of things actually that, are, that continue to go on in spite of the fact that we are in this pandemic when we are uh, safer at home and safer not gathering in large groups. So thank you to those of you who are making offerings, continuing this vital ministry in our lives. And now we sing our offertory canticle, Take My Life That I May Be. Their individuality of culture and spirituality, 
Lead us to understand their needs within the context of their lives. Supply us with the wisdom to help others so that they can be blessed by the opportunities that we have received. Continue to direct and enlighten us that we may be servants to the world and all peoples. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you now and forever. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, My Eyes Have Seen the Glory.
Thank you.